Hi everyone, this is the Stupid Genius 55. I'm gonna give you. I was gonna do this video like a, cu a couple weeks ago. Uh, it's my opinion on Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Gates to Infinity because the game kind of is polarizing a bit among the fan base. Some people think it's good, some people don't really like it that much uh, compared to the older ones. I honestly think this game is a substantial improvement from the older ones, to be honest, even though a lot of people disagree with me. But I, I do kind of understand why some people don't like it. There's not, um, quite, um, quite simply, there aren't as many Pokemon in this game, and most of them are from 5th Gen. A lot of people are not into the 5th Gen Pokemon, which I honestly don't get. I am, I think they're all okay. I kind of like them. Uh, like, I like them as much as the previous gens, basically, so I guess that's why I don't have a problem with it, because of the starters you have, you get a choice between the Universe starters, Snivy, uh, Oshawott, and Tepig, and you also get Axew and you get Pikachu, and that's kind of it. The previous games had starters, uh, from all the gens up to that point, and plus a bunch of extras, like, uh, like a bunch of other ones. Um, and most of the Pokemon in the game, like, beyond, like, uh, Eve, even not including the starters, most of the Pokemon in that game are, there, there's a very limited amount of them, and most, uh, a good chunk of them are the 5th gen one, which, again, a lot of people don't like 5th gen Pokemon, so. If you're not a big fan of those, then I can, I can definitely see why you're not into it. But that being said, I find, let me explain something, I have a bit of a problem with the Mystery Dungeon series, and that I find the gameplay can get really, really repetitive, and tedious, it, it, and I I don't have fun through a good chunk of it, because you often go through, like, the same dungeons, they're very, I think the dungeons are way too long, to be honest, maybe I don't, I don't really play that many roguelikes, keep in mind, so, I don't know if this is standard, but, um, so yeah, I guess if you like roguelikes, I, I don't really know, I can't really compare them to other roguelikes, mind you, so, but the mystery, uh, Gates to Infinity, in my opinion, from what I've, like, for me, has that problem to a much lesser extent than the previous installments of the series had, because um, the dungeons are a bit shorter. Sometimes the in the older games you'd have you'd go onto a floor and the stairs would be randomly appear right next to you, like as soon as you enter the floor. So and that doesn't seem to happen as much in this game. So I guess that can make it seem longer. But um, I really it didn't feel as tedious when I was playing the Gates to Infinity. Really, I had a better ex like I felt like I was having better experience playing Gates to Infinity than I had playing uh, Explorers of Time, Darkness Guy. You know? Um, that was my big problem with the entire series. Um, I think the story though was fantastic, and um, for the what you call it, the game. <laughs> Pokemon Mystery Dungeon 2, and, um, I think, uh, Gates to Infinity story is roughly on par with, uh, I think with, uh, Explorers of Time, Darkness Sky, I think it's about as good, to be honest, um, and the gameplay is just a bit less tedious, so that's kind of why I like it, that, that's why, that is why I like it, just as much, um, but yes, that's because, that's probably because I'm not, I don't really, uh, have, uh, I, I'm, I like the Unova Pokemon, I like Gen 5 Pokemon, so if you're not into Gen 5 Pokemon, then yes, I can definitely see why you prefer the older ones. I honestly like the, uh, Gen 5 Pokemon, um, just as well, so. And as for the, as for the starters, um, another thing that I kind of like better about this one, even though there's a less of a choice, I'm so glad you don't have to do a quiz anymore. Some people like the, uh, kind of atmosphere, I, I, some people like the quiz better, because the personality quiz that you take to get the Pokemon, and although I like the atmosphere of it, if you want to select a specific Pokemon to use, because they throw the questions at you randomly, um, well, sorry, like, the, the choice of questions is random, it takes so long to pick one because you're not guaranteed to get questions that will let that would even you know get you your pokemon like what i did was i look up guides on what questions to answer for which pokemon i'll get and every single time like tons of times they won't give me the right uh questions in order to get that pokemon and i would just have to re restart it so many times and it, it was so frustrating to me to be honest i really just like that they let you pick which pokemon you want right out of the gate that being said i do not like the fact that they only gave you five i understand uh, i understand why they probably did it it's because you know for a new player in the series like getting to choose directly your starter if they gave you like 20 or so pokemon to choose from it'd be pretty overwhelming i mean it's a pretty important decision you get the pokemon for the rest of the game so um, it, like, that's when you're sticking with. So I, I get why they did it, but they really should have given you more than five. Like, I don't think that they should have limited, limited, limited it to just five. And I am really surprised that, uh, even though I do like fifth gen Pokemon, I am really surprised that you didn't get a choice of starters from previous gen aside from Pikachu. Like, Charmander or Mudkip or Riolu.
Hulu, some of those really popular ones that a lot of people are into, they should have had those, to be honest. Now, to be honest, I don't think they should have had about as many Pokemon as the older Mystery Engine games had, because as I said, for new players, you know, it'd be pretty overwhelming to just, when you don't have the information, just to choose a new Pokemon. And even though you could choose your partner, like, uh, in the older Mystery Engine games, you could choose your partner from any of, like, the 20 or so Pokemon uh, that, that they'd give you, but in that case, you know, it, it doesn't really seem as big a deal, because you've already, they've already chosen your your first starter, so the second one, they give you, like, by the way, they give you, like, a choice of eight or so uh, starter. They, they, even though you can choose from any starter you want, there's, like, this uh, menu that you have to scroll through to see them all, and I assumed that you could only choose from, like, eight randomly chosen ones for your partner, to be honest, uh, after. Like, basically, what I mean is that uh, once you choose Pokemon, I thought that your partner could only be, like, the choices for your partner Pokemon, I assumed that they, that, like, the eight choices they showed you immediately are the only ones that you were allowed to pick that time, and I didn't know you could scroll through the list and see more. Um, that's pretty, but yes, I, I really, I do agree that, uh, their choice of, the way they handled the start, choosing the starters, I do, on the whole, like, it better than the previous way they did it, but they could have done it much better. They could have added, uh, maybe, like, five or so of the older Pokemon, to be honest. But on the whole, I really think the game is not as tedious as the older installments, and the story is just as good as, uh, or, like, to me, I find the story roughly as good as, uh, Time, Darkness, Scott, well, the Pokemon Mission Engine 2 games. So, um, yeah. That's basically what I think. So, have fun, everyone.